Hello everyone, welcome back to the FTCR channel. In this video, we'll discuss one of the clutch system commonly used in manual transmission to wheeled vehicles, the wet clutch. Since you are probably familiar with this tool, let's get straight to the heart of the discussion. Okay, the clutch. This component is crucial in vehicles as it disconnects or connects the engine's rotation to the transmission and the wheels. In practice, using the clutch on a vehicle is relatively simple as we only need to engage the lever. Its purpose is singular, to minimize load fluctuations the engine receives. For example, in conditions such as a vehicle startup, shifting, and stopping. But how does this device work? The clutch begins to operate as soon as the engine starts, where the piston's power is converted into rotational energy on the crankshaft. This rotation is then transmitted to the pair of gears connected to the clutch assembly before being directed to the gearbox or transmission. To make it easier to understand, we will disassemble the clutch system. The clutch consists of several integrated parts. First is the pressure plates, the clutch spring, and their respective bolts. These components work together to exert pressure on the clutch pack, consisting of friction plates and steel plates. Secondly, there is clutch basket, which is connected to the gears leading to the crankshaft, and their inner hub which is directly connected to the input shaft of the gearbox. Then there's the exerter arm, bearing, and rod which control the brazer plates. Note, usually the shape of the rod can be either a pull rod or push rod, depending on the engine's configuration. The last component, of course, are the clutch cable and lever. Alright, those are the parts that make up the clutch assembly. Now let's take a look at the how these components work together. The first component is the clutch basket. This component is connected to the engine and can move freely without affecting the gearbox. As for the second component is the inner hub, which when attached is directly connected to the input shaft. As we can see, when this component is rotated, the input shaft in the transmission also rotates. In this condition, the clutch basket and the inner hub can move independently. We need a hypothetical connector between the clutch basket and the inner hub to transmit the rotation from the crankshaft to the gearbox. When this hypothetical connector is engaged and start working, rotational energy from the crankshaft is transferred to the input shaft of the gearbox. Then, when the hypothetical connector is disengaged, the connection of energy or rotation is interrupted and both components move independently again. Well, that's how the inner hub and clutch basket work. However, here we encounter an issue. The rotation from the engine can only be transmitted when the engine is at a standstill or turn off. If the engine is running, we will have difficulty re-engaging the hypothetical connector because of the challenge of aligning the positions of the clutch basket, inner hub, and the connector. To address this issue, engineers redesigned the hypothetical connector to make it work as intended. That is, intending to transmit and entrap the rotation from the engine to the gearbox without removing the hypothetical connector component. This condition was realized by splitting the hypothetical connector into two different parts. First, the friction plate, which function to grip and lock onto the clutch basket. And upon closer inspection, this component also has a rough section on its surface. The second is the steel plate. This plate has a tip or spline on its inner area, which locks the rotation on the inner hub to the input shaft in the gearbox. Both components function as the hypothetical connector by clamping between the rough surface friction plate and the steel plate utilizing the pressure from the spring in the pressure plates. By utilizing this frictional force, when the spring presses the pressure plate, these two components can effectively replace the function of the hypothetical connector. However, if we delve deeper, it's clear that more than relying on friction is needed to withstand the torque transmitted from the engine, which could lead to slipping. That's why the friction and steel plates are developed and installed in greater numbers, adjusted to the vehicle's weight and the engine's requirements. This condition ensures that the gripping force between these two parts can support the torque coming from the engines and transmit it to the gearbox without slipping. It also allows us to disconnect or connect this rotational energy as needed. Now that we've addressed the issue of the hypothetical connector, let's move on to another challenge. How to operate this device from a handle far from the engine, specifically on the motorcycle handlebars. 
Several additional components we discussed earlier are created to overcome this, namely the actuator arm, clutch lever, clutch cable, bearing, and pull rod. Please note that in the video, we are using a pull rod. This component operates by pulling the clutch lever connected to the actuator arm through a cable. The pull from the clutch lever is converted into a twisting force that rotates the actuator arm. This rotation pulls a rod connected directly to the pressure plate through a bearing, reducing the frictional force between the friction plate and the steel plate. People commonly refer to this condition as half clutch. Then if the clutch pressure is continued until the friction between the plates is completely disconnected, this is the full clutch position. When the clutch lever is released, the spring in the pressure plate will push the pressure plate back inward to exert pressure on both the steel plate and the friction plate, creating friction until these two components lock together. In this condition, the vehicle can move smoothly, starting, going uphill, or stopping. That's roughly the information in our video today about the wet clutch. What do you think, everyone? Don't hesitate to join the discussion in the comments below. See you in the next video and thanks for watching.